Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while since we did like a whole weekend stream. Uh, Alex is away on vacation, so it's a good weekend for it. Let's get some lights. And we have a nighttime highball. So we're really going to go hard. Uh, if you watched my stream this morning, we wrote the code that was on the stream. Code that was on the screen. I think we can make this light a little brighter. Let's crank the brightness up here. Yes, there we go. Like the old days, you know? Good evening, everybody. Okay, so this is the code. We're gonna go right to subscribers only because we gotta focus. We have things to do. We're writing our Qualcomm GPU driver. Thanks to a nighttime highball. So, here we have we create the device, we allocate, and you can see these are the allocations actually being passed into the GPU. Um, but this is hand coded. So let's figure out how to not hand code that using regular expressions. I need to do that. So um, for those just joining, we are SSH'd into this phone uh, running Termux. Um, and then in Termux, we're running code server, uh, which is running a VS code server that we're connected to through 8080, which is being forwarded through ADB. How are we gonna write a GPU driver? Oh. So it's a little misleading. We're not writing a metal GPU driver. We're writing the user space of a GPU driver. The kernel one is actually pretty clean. Um, so on the last stream, we downloaded uh, the kernel from Samsung's open source. And where is it? Well, if we just rip grab this. Here we go. Vendor QCOM open source graphics kernel. This is the kernel space of the driver. And actually the code of it is pretty clean. Um, it's more readable than the uh, AMD and NVIDIA drivers. Uh, I'd say AMD is the least readable followed by NVIDIA followed by this. Um, the NPU. Well, we might be able to use the, what do you mean by the NPU? We were too amped up in the last stream. So as you know, I'm excited for the weekend and we go on big rants about how we're going to fix America. But then you go outside and you touch grass and you remember that the universe is going to end anyway. So, you know, just always got to keep that in mind. The heat death of the universe, it's where we're going. So, let's extract some stuff using regexes. I'm not very good at regexes, but we're going to try our best. It does seem like they're all laid out like this. I want to extract the name of the struct, this, let's try our best at regexes. Regex. Do we think Quentin can help us?
Quentin, I summon you. Graphic executive. Can you write a regex to extract? Is there any hope of this working? No, there's no hope of this working. Quentin, I need you to be smarter. All right, is you think Mixtral is gonna be smarter? Is this actually Mixtral or is this drop down do nothing? Much better. Oh, Mixtral, so much smarter. Whoa. Whoa, that just worked. Thanks, Mixtral. it's gonna work because I think it doesn't know about the uh yeah it didn't actually copy the slashes for some reason line allows the regex to match across lines did you hallucinate that Quentin no matches 
Oh, I think that it made some other change too. Pebcac, boys, Pebcac. Uh, looks the same. The backslash at the end of the line is not part of the regex. Quentin has some encoding issue, it seems. Slash S plus. Let's start with just that. Let's debug my regex. Uh, okay, so we're gonna need actually to put that plus there. I do kind of know regex syntax. Okay, so those are those ioctals. Now they're all followed by a Base. I think if I put that there, it breaks. Yeah. Um, regex pattern allows spaces. Just add a space in your character class. What is it? Regex backslash s. White space. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We need not just matches white space. Uh, that maybe? Okay, but now I have a weird match. Put a question mark there. Oh, this just normal slash slash work. Yeah, but why is this not that now? All right, well, either way, it looks like it's working again. No. Oh, that slash is bad? No. Okay, let me go with the actual. Are there any IO? regex101.com Okay. 
does not match the subject string. Oh, that's a capturing group? No, I don't want a capturing group. Does that work? I do want this to capture, though. I think. This should capture. Capture that. Oh, this is so much better than stupid GPT shits. Plus, uh, I O W. Um, let me get a few more of these in there. Don't use I W R. Thank you, Reg X One Hundred One guy. I like you. Oh, this one's annoying. Should I just remove all the, I can just remove those in Python. It's faster to just remove them in Python. Not dealing with that. R question mark slash that. Um, I don't really care about that. I should just type it if I want. I want this to be a capturing group. Where's my stupid perplex? Cool. All right, we got that extracted. Now, comma, oh, I should do slash s plus, slash s plus, struct, space, slash s, uh, and then, yeah, we'll make that a capturing group. Great. Great. Thanks for regex 101. There we go. Create a dictionary out of these. Um, what is that? NR. NR is equals, okay, so it's not actually match, it's going to be um, name NR and S name. Int nr comma ten colon name s name. Thanks, GP shit. All right. Uh, 
name s name equals nr sub nr. Segmentation fault. Uh, oh, does I have to do SM underscore KGL? I don't like that that segmentation faults if it fails. Oh, there might just be lots of segmentation faults. Okay, well, that works. Um, does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay, good. Now we have all the names of the ioptals. Now we just need to parse the struct. Um, get adder mkgl struct underscore s name s type segmentation vault. Maybe not good. Maybe that. I don't care about that. Okay. So that's that's all the calls. Uh, now we have the struct. We're going to have to cast it to the struct. <sighs> Segmentation fault, eh? S type that size of. Does this work? No. Does this just not work? No, no, no. we established that works. For some reason, get adder field name doesn't, or they're just not all strings. Oh, that works too. Great. Uh, so I can do this in here, I imagine, too. Stupid, that's stupid. Oh, why did I put a comma? Who uses commas? Ah, uh, yeah, it was probably complaining when I was trying to cast that one. Okay. Pretty cool. Um, let's call the syscall first. And also, I shouldn't have called this callback. I should call this ioctal. Pretty sweet. Um,
All right. Hey, it's a GPU driver. Do you know how long this kind of shit took to write in C? I would like do it by hand and I would copy and paste and it was a huge waste of time. But now with the power of regular expressions. So, some of these are inputs and some of them are outputs. Uh, all these ones called padding we don't care about. Um, if field name dot starts with padding. Much more beautiful. Oh, what is this pad? It's just padding zero, right? Great. That's much more beautiful to read. What's interesting, I actually got rid of all the ones that aren't simple types too, which is cool. Okay, so we're just getting started because this is just the, um, Shouldn't actually do S name. We should go a step further with this and put these in here. We just get S type.
is ready for fireworks. Let's try this with actual TinyGrad. From TinyGrad, import tensor. Tensor dot. Uh, let's just make a tensor zero, one, two, three, like this. Okay, segmentation folds. Fireworks, as promised. Uh, oh, there's probably other ioctals. Um, we have NR in NRs. And I should actually check the I type too. Uh, so you can see 1 plus 3 is 4 and 2 plus 4 is 6. So it did work. Um, separate that. Create tensor B actually did nothing interesting. Uh, I can realize these two. that I octal is for. But it's not for. I could check the FD as well. Unsupported format string passed to none type format. What? Understand that. Whatever, didn't mean to break anything. Let's pop that out. Um Tensor A, create tensor B, add tensors. Okay, we allocate, call this command, call this command. Uh, so this is the stuff that actually matters. And then we wait for it to finish, and then we're good. We do a whole lot of init stuff when we first access the GPU. Uh, we create tensor A, we create tensor B, we add the tensors, we fire off the command. Um, now, remember that most of GPUs are not actually controlled in, uh, in kernel space, but rather in user space. 
So the structure that goes into this command list is where things get interesting. Um, and this is still like, we've only parsed the single layer pointers, not the double layer pointers. Actually, I would parse the double layer pointers if we had that, but we don't. Uh, hopefully we have that struct. There's a chance we'll get to structs we also don't have. And um, we'll see if we can find them. So what we can do almost right away is replay. If we replay this GPU command, um, it will re-add the tensors. And then if we replay this, it'll copy out. Uh, well, an interesting question is why didn't it copy anything in? Probably because we mapped it. GPU adder. Okay, so an Alex must return to you this ID, and then this thing has gotten through there. Um, why are we allocating two things there? Oh, it must. I mean, this is also interesting to see what TinyGrad's actually doing. I don't know why it's calling allocate twice there. Well, so one thing we can also do is get this to integrate with the TinyJet. So one of the things you can import right from TinyGrad is the TinyJet. And then we can have add a b return a plus b. Realize. Tiny Jit's a decorator. And now I can change this to C add A plus B. Let's also run this with debug equals two to see what tiny red thinks it's doing. Oh, it's not actually executing the GPU command because we didn't have to wait for it. But you see this? So this is, uh, let me actually print that little loop here. So for the second and third run, we're actually in the JIT. Um, and you can see that it's running, and it's actually using the same command list. It must be freeing it. We must be getting lucky that that just happens to be unused RAM. In fact, how did I deal with this in, uh... I don't know how I dealt with this in Thneed. We can look. So I've written parts of a this driver before. Um, but it's so cool to see like, so this, these prints are from TinyGrad. So you can see this is what actually runs and it's interesting that it is the same. These are different. I mean, it must just be getting the same, uh, cause it should be the same command. By the way, we can put other uh, things in here. I know this is just one kernel, but let's like throw a dot sum on there too. Uh, no, that'll be fused. We have to find something that isn't fused. That's fused. So it's fused to one kernel. Uh, what wouldn't be fused? It's hard to find stuff that's not fused. Whatever. It's not that interesting. Uh, GPU command is just, it's gonna be more than one actual uh, command. Well, actually, 
I'm not sure to model. So. Okay, we can go a few different ways with this. Unfortunately, I do think if we start replaying this stuff ourselves, these timestamps won't line up anymore. So once you hand control over to the new GPU driver, the old GPU driver no longer wants to, uh, wants to do anything. Um, it's interesting too that here, like, it doesn't actually submit anything to the GPU for the first two times. Like, notice how in two and three now? Um, well, debug equals one isn't good. D debug equals two actually issues weights. And that's why that's there. It syncs the uh, the pipeline. But if I don't sync the pipeline, it does nothing. Which is very interesting. And it calls that three times. Which isn't even that. Strange. Um okay. Maybe we should start diving into what these structs actually look like. Yeah, by the way, the, these prints are from Tiny Red. So if, if I don't install the hook, you see it's just this. Constantine might be smarter. Quentin's an idiot. What do we want to ask Quentin? They both they both failed at right. Reg X one hundred and one crushed them both. Okay, victory for that's it's. What? Oh, I'm so close to. I'm so just habituated to clicking deny on something that even if it's something I want. Okay, so it's a user pointer. So that's definitely understandable. Um, it looks like we have three lists here, a command list, an obj list, and a sync list. Let's open up the GPU driver. Oh, I had it before. Did I open it? Graphics kernel. Yeah, let's find the thing that actually parses this struct. Param. Process command input. Well, we have a max number of shits. Uh, okay, that doesn't look like it does anything. Process command input, get owner, add sync list, KGSL draw object, okay, U64 to user pointer command list. Okay, whatever's passed in is the second thing there. Oh, this is a draw obj command. We might not want that. I want a different command. Okay, and then we're also gonna need to get this header file and put it in uh, the C types thing. So I generated this. Uh, I should really, I should really um, this is called like uh, clang to pi 
MGSM KGSL O. Let's see if that didn't. No. Okay, let's go. Create a folder here called gen.sh. Shebang. Uh, oh, it's not user bin and visit. See if that works. Cool, works. Okay. Um, let's. I don't think it's a draw command. So these are the different objects here. It's. I mean, it might be a draw command. I don't know. KDSL draw obj command. Okay, let's see if there's other command options. AGSL command objects. Okay, this is their version of MSM KGSL. It should be the same. I don't think anything changed. I mean, it might have. No, it looks the same. So this is the one that's used in uh, in OpenPilot. Mm, okay, it doesn't look like there's more crap here. Can probably get all these uh okay so it sure does look like there's only Draw objects, it's fine. We'll say it's a draw, whatever. Okay, so where's my draw objects? Draw obj. Good, this doesn't seem to include anything stupid. This looks pretty real. Um, how do I get that over to the other computer? Build Refold 5. Oh, I could just SK it actually. Remember, guys, this computer is this a Samsung Z Fold 5 with a Qualcomm 8550 chip in it. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Um, we looked into using that chip for the uh, comma 3X, but Qualcomm wanted to charge us an arm and a leg, and I was only willing to pay a finger. So, you know. It's a nice chip, but, oh, notice how watch doesn't work. Why would it be executable? See, like, little things like that. Who knows that if stuff is green, it's because it's executable. And it's executable because there's a bit in the mode called plus X. You see, now when I ls, that X will be gone, right? Little things like that, right? You see, it's a predictive model of the future. What's going to happen if I type ls, right? You're testing the model quality. Gonna work. Linux DMA fence. Well, I don't like fences anyway. How much is it gonna bitch and tell me I don't have? All right. Oh, Jesus. Well, that type I can deal with. Why are like the basic types not here? K 
KRAF list head. Uh, I don't think I care about that struct. Should I just maybe just take out the ones I care about? Oh, that's a kernel only struct. Okay. Delete. Uh, wait, what? No, 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 that can't be right. Then we have the wrong kind of, no, these aren't right. This just isn't right. Because that has an internal kernel struct. Okay, I'm gonna read the code right, read it more carefully. We allocate an internal one here. This is just not right. Wrong type. If I alkyl GPU command, add command list. It's the third parameter to this. User pointer. What's in pointer? Copy struct from user. Oh, it's a KGSL command object. Okay, where is this? Oh, it's in MSM KGSL. Okay, so we already have this then. Okay. So that was a red errant herring or whatever. That was a red errand. All right. KGSL command object. Offset. GPU adder size flags ID. Great, but now what do I do? Um, if It. I deal with this here. What type is it? Wait. Why is that one the wrong type and that one the right type? GSL command object. Okay, I think this is right. Um, create a helper function, print prop.
list. MSM KGSL not defined. Cast two must be a pointer type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, put that in. I don't want to put that in format struct. LP KGSL, what? No, that should be the same as that. I don't understand the difference. Oh, contents? Yeah, okay, we're just going to put this in here. S is not defined. Oh, that's annoying. Pretty legit. Um, wow, it really is resubmitting the same thing twice. I wonder how much time it's spending computing that it's the same thing. Actually, it's weird. You can see now that command list, oh, no, it's different there. It's the same. It's so weird. Okay, uh, what is an object list? Oh, I also think that there's two of these. All right, if we look at a KGSL command object, yeah, that's hex 10, right? See? Wait, no, that's hex 20. Okay, then how come num commands is two if command size is? Oh, that might just be times. I don't know. Um, can I do this? Oh, actually, also, that okay, that looks pretty legit. But if I did one more, it wouldn't work. Yeah, that looks like crap. Okay, good. So that is the actual size. So here I can just do plus equals s dot command size. Okay, for i in range s dot num commands. Oh, I love Python. Oh, you know how hard this is and not Python? So shitty. So those are the commands out of the command list. Don't get married if you want to keep working eight hours a week. No, you got to have a wife that's understanding.
Okay, add mem last. Let's take a look in this function and see what the underlying pointer type is. Copy struct from user into ob. So it's also kob, it's also kgsl command object. see here we're submitting two commands here and an object here two commands here and an object here two commands here and an object here how do we go further those are GPU adders Can we malloc them? Oh, sorry, I mapped them? Well, okay. No, 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 I know what we have to do. So if we go back here, I'm sure this GPU adder was given to us somewhere. No, or something like it at least. Here, we alloc all these objects up here. This object here. So yeah, the first command, oh, and there are commands here which copy the GPU to the CPU. That looks to always be in there. That's the GPU adder. Maybe I should print the return value too. We should have it, right? Yeah, because I do the return there, so. Oh, I see, these ones fail. Well, that's cool. Okay, so it's uh, polling. Oh, it's polling because this timeout is low. If I set the timeout longer, it would probably actually just wait. But it looks like it just pulls. Pull, 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 pull. Who knows the difference between polling and an interrupt? All right. One is a democracy and the other is very rude. What's the difference between a first year lit student and my mother? <laughs> my mother's actually a very lovely woman. You know, Bojack sits around and watches old episodes of Horsin' Around, and I sit around and watch old episodes of Bojack. What's that number? How's that getting printed? Oh, yo, be a little longer. You can tell that my, it's 222 characters big. So what up there fails? I can't get that property. So, I don't exactly understand. Um, is tape out in the distant future? Well, I want you to think about that for a minute. What good do you think a tape out is? What do you think you want to tape out, right? 
Why do you think what you build is going to be better than the Qualcomm GPU? It's not. But I think I can write drivers that don't pull. So you might want to stop thinking about, you know, building a chip before you can write drivers for the chips that already exist. And if you can't write better drivers for the chips that exist, trust me, your chip is worse. Again, what I'm telling you right now is alpha that could have saved billions of dollars collectively on ridiculous chip tape outs that clearly were never going anywhere. Um, you know, I hear myself saying that, and then the thing that makes me really angry is like, it's one thing if they were trying their best, but what if they weren't trying their best, right? Like sometimes I'll tell this to people and they're like, George, you know, obviously this is true, but you have to realize that if they didn't tape out that chip, these jobs wouldn't have been created. And like, that is just the saddest thing if that's true about the world. And, and I guess that is one of the things Kama really taught me. It's that companies there's a uh, we're gonna we're gonna we have more Bojack lines, right? Wait, making TV is people's full time job? Like like why is it all so bad then? I kind of thought they just weren't trying. But why do you think it's a good time to distract me? Are you not enjoying this? We have a question of how we get the, all right, so I allocate this object. I think I probably actually have an answer to this in the need. See, look how ugly C is, C is so ugly. Oh yeah, when I jacked the priority up. I don't parse the commands in that one because it was too annoying. Um wait, interesting. What? Alec ID? Oh, I see. Okay. So every time I get an info, I can just mmap that. Is mmap size ever not equal to size? Right, or does that just happen to work? How did I get that? So I'm just here, I multiply the alloc ID by I get a GPU object info. I'm gonna create a M mapped M mapped sub S dot GPU adder equals M map. Uh, the length 
is gonna be size. All these things are always equal. I think it has all the uh, prot write read access equals access default map shared. All that's fine. Uh, all right, is this really? I'm just gonna copy that from the and maybe it's right. Okay, does this work? I guess that could silently fail if I have a typo or something. No, this seems to work. Okay, um. cmd dot gpu adder cmd dot gpu adder in mmap hex dump mmap sub colon size uh, oh Um, so these are sub alex, but this is a GPU command. Yeah, and I think I do copy these out in Thneed, I think. Um, I do allocate my own GPU memory. Yeah, I have GPU malloc, and then I like, yeah, I like alloc things. Oh, oh, see. Oh, see. Look at that disgusting. Look how many lines it is. It's so many lines. AI is going to make Python fast. Yeah, okay. So I do copy out each command. Oh, so I, I do this. Okay, I get the KGSL command object. I see. Yeah, okay. So I've actually done this before, many years ago, sort of, in a much uglier way. So Thneed's not actually a driver. Thneed's an interceptor and replay engine. Um, so are these the same? Sure looks like it. Uh, I need like a range struct. There are ways to get these. Hmm. Should I try to help a function? Uh, okay. There's not that many of them. We'll just loop through all of them. FK less than or equal to adder and adder less than length of V. something. Now how do we parse that incoherent blob? I think we're 
getting this stuff mostly correct. That's an ob. That's an ob. I will note that those are different. Even these are different. Okay. And we don't have any sync obs. I don't know what those are. Um. So I mean, the need thing just basically caches at this layer. It copies out these GPU adders. into cleanly alloced memory. Okay, so this is a command buffer. I think I might have actually worked once on trying to disassemble these. I'm not gonna find any of that stuff though. So we wanna we wanna parse this command buffer. We wanna write a helper function to parse the command buffer. This one's a lot nicer than the NVIDIA ones, where you're this one actually like passes in the uh it uses an ioctal to pass in the thing. It's that the NVIDIA one uses these like doorbell registers and you have to hook them and it's weird. Why are we rying a GPU driver? I don't know, bro. Why do people rye bread? Why do people rye boats? You get it, rye boat? I'm gonna rye boat. Uh, all right, so like, no, I don't have to, okay. One place we can look for this kind of stuff, I don't think we're gonna find this in the kernel driver. Oh, we copy in the struct from user. We sometimes throw an error. We can add a profiling buffer. What if we add a profiling buffer? desk okay what struct is this and how are we going to parse it you see like some similarities here and here uh, we won't need to worry we don't need to parse that right now let's focus on parsing the command buffers and let's see if we have the stuff to do it so another place we can look that should be like kind of right is what's it called? Adreno? No, no, no. What's the uh, open source one called? Free Adreno driver. Oh, CP commands write to registers. Let's see if we have these. No, we don't. Uh, okay, so this is probably the, for Gino Turnip is a shader core for shader compiler, image layout, what's Turnip? Oh, Turnip is a Vulcan driver. hasn't been updated in a long time. They like put it in Mesa, I think. Mm. 
Oh no, but it hasn't been updated for this new one yet. Okay, this is the easiest part, is it's identical to Radeon. The command stream parser is here. Like a lot of stuff. So I use I've used the shader disassembler. I'm not trying to disassemble the shader that will get there. Some of these things have to be pointers to programs. But this is like the command stream, and I want to see what commands are actually being sent to the GPU. We can try it. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Um, do you know about the format of the Adreno command stream packets? Okay. Wait. Is this not? No, it has to be. Shit up. Um, uh, so no, the LLM has no idea, and even worse, it doesn't know it has no idea. Okay, GPT-4 is a lot better. Shame we can't use it on stream. consecutive D words. It's probably this. Although this, don't you mean, can I edit this wiki? That's definitely 30, not 32.
really part of the progress of humanity. I'm just kind of, it's kind of fun, you know. Primarily of type zero and type three commands. So what's a type three command? Data. Perform the operation by IT op code. I don't think either of those is right. Unless I'm not reading the, I could also be getting that wrong. That's probably right. Just, it's so weird. That it happens to be offset that. Well, actually it's not that weird. This is probably being mapped by the, uh, Probably I figured it out, right? I can just see what mmap you are. So if you look at the mmap, yeah, it's the same. So you see I'm just calling, I'm calling mmap the same way C is. Okay, so it's not that. So this is the real command buffer. I just have to learn how to parse it. Okay, that's the same. Oh, that's just the count, okay. So there's 97 there, it's all the count. IT op code is zero, zero here, and it's zero, one there, and then P is there. What's P? Where are the op codes? one been updated recently? Not at all. Where is Fredrino now? Definitely not that. Okay, this seems to have support for it. Where is Fredrino Turnip? Is it in Mesa? I mean, there is, this is like a third party driver. We developed on Mesa 3D. Is there a branch? No. PM4. What's a fuck? This is some old Adreno shit. Where's Turnip? Is Turnip in here? I like Turnip. That sounds good. That sounds like it works. No Turnip. You references to Turnip. 
turn up Mesa driver. Where's Trump? But this is the Qualcomm GPU. It's the same thing. Does, does nothing make sense? Where's the CP indirect buffer? Okay, here we go. Uh, RD, okay. 2CS emit packet 7. that defined no we got lucky you clicked it okay okay outring CP type 3 packet wait it might not be a type 3 packet uh, does not look like a type 3 packet actually this looks like a type zero packet. So that's a seven or, or a type four packet or a type seven packet. That actually makes the most sense. Okay, this is a type seven packet. Packet is type seven. PM calc odd parity bit. Wow. Okay, and the count is just zero, and this is op code ninety seven, and this is op code twenty six. The odd parity bit here is that. The count is, wow. Okay. I wish we like had like a struct for this, you know? Kind of be cool. All right, so like, what are my, uh... What are my opcode types? And why does this one have zero? Oh, this is just another one there. Okay. That makes sense, right? So this has a count of one, so it has one there. This is a count of three, so it has one, two, three, and then there's another packet right there. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's pretty chill. <clears throat> should we write a quick disassembler or should we try to get this stuff to build? command bob dat len no, actually I can just say dat because it's python okay uh, 
if dat sub three equals seventy, uh, struct the struct type, although like what's a 97 opcode? And what are the other packet types? Should we just define structs? It's definitely like it's a definitely a 32-bit system. So maybe we just do that. Thank you, Hype Train. Um, okay, so that's type 7. We're going to do pointer plus equals 4 times count. We should do something simpler. Buffer is not writable. I made you bytes. Oh. Just call bytes in the object. From 
buffer. Oh, it's not byte, it's byte array. Okay, that works. Uh, yeah, I've got synchronize. Okay, cool. All right, now we're doing just one simple, okay, it still apparently has two commands. Um, Type seven, that's the count and the, uh, look at the opcode. Where's opcode? There we go. X shift shift 16, uh, opcode equals command shift shift 16 and seven F. Shift, shift 16 and 7F. Okay, so those are the opcodes. We've got a 23, a 62, and a 16. Here we have a type four command. How do we parse a type four command? Okay. So that's just if the first byte is that. Then where is type four defined? Okay. So oh interesting. Don't it's only three F F F F F. Alright, so in order to get the packet here, we have an offset. What the hell's an offset? Okay, well whatever, it's an offset. The size. And this is not called count, it's called size. Okay, so we get this, we get the size with 7f, and we get the offset with shift, shift, 8. I don't like how much I'm doing by hand here. This better get simple fast. Okay. Um, that seems like reasonable, I guess. So those must be type zero packets. Okay, if packet is type zero, that just means that when I shift shift left, 30, I get zero. What do zero packets have? Zero packets have this size. They can't have that size because that would skip too much. They also have offsets. Their offset is just command. No, don't change that. Their offset is just command and seven F F F F. Their size is sixteen and this plus one. Oh, I didn't parse that right. My bad. Huh. 
Okay, cool. So there actually are no type zero packets. There's only, get rid of that then. Comment. Okay, we have type seven packets and type four packets. That's pretty good. There's only two types of packets. And there are a bajillion different opcodes. Okay, this looks pretty familiar from other GPUs I've seen. This is further than I've ever gone with uh, with Qualcomm, by the way. Um, also going to put pointer 3x here. I think I like briefly looked into this when I was doing the need, and then was like, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. Uh, put that um, okay, cool. Let's stop printing that stupid hex thumb. Now we're parsing the command buffer. Now I'm only doing one copy in now. I commented out, well, I didn't comment it out, but I put a zero there. Um, I'm going to push this for you guys. Should be able to do this. I don't know if anyone's paying any attention, but. So what is a type 7 and what is a type 4? Friedrino, can you answer it for me? By the way, very cool that these people, you know, you gotta, the amount of work that goes into this open source stuff, things that like some random person somewhere is obsessed with, you know, not everyone in the world is terrible. Um, I don't really understand if I were Qualcomm I would just like I'm sure my internal driver is garbage I don't understand why they don't just switch to the uh, switch to the open source stuff how many viewers we got are people enjoying this okay packet mostly fall into one or two categories or depending on generation oh we really never do need this then 700 all right cool my usual um, packet with opcode and opcode specific payload. Well, I, I like more that we've committed that. Now that that's committed, you can do it, you can delete it. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are these opcodes? This is writing registers. Like, writing registers is pretty, uh, so you have to figure out what's in these registers, because this is very similar. Like NVIDIA has basically the same architecture here. Um, I bet this is where we'll find like the uh, global size and local size and stuff, right? So this is a command stream that's going to the GPU. Um, and I bet there can be multiple things here. We can go back to running the tiny grad example. Copy out's kind of stupid. We can just not do that. So if you see here, this is similar. We're doing a an add. Um, if you want to actually see what the kernel looks like, we can run it with debug equals four. So this is running this OpenCL program here. But the code's not in here. You'll see, the code is in. Uh, junk, 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 okay. Um, vowels equals i times size plus this, plus four times that. Uh, comma valves. That. Okay. So those are the values that are being put in the uh, net register. Um, we can look. So this is a local size of two.
Mm. Make them bigger. All right, so see this changes. This has a something 50, something 25. Maybe that's that 25. changes here no that's still that 25 and that's a hundred oh I see so this is probably the local this is probably like the total size which is 25 times 4 and then this is the uh, dependent size oh okay I like this oh this is pretty clear oh I see what this is cool I love when things work out okay so these are the global sizes right and then this is the like it's a little bit wrong. You don't usually think of, because uh, this doesn't correspond with OpenCL or CUDA's way of thinking about it. But this is the number of globals, and this is the total number completely. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we'll see what that, uh, I'm sure we'll see that corresponds to stuff. Okay, so that's cool. Um, yeah, these are the values in the registers. By the way, I'm so happy we're doing this in Python, because like, look how easy it is to just write that. All right, like I just wrote that, not that. I wrote that. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's figure out what these type seven opcodes are then. Type 7 opcode? Well, yeah, but there's a list of opcodes. Packet name. Oh. oh. This is Adreno PM4 type 3 packets. Where's the type 7 packets? There are no type 7 packets. They might be the same. Uh, where did I find that good stuff about like saying which? Okay. Oh. Okay. So as long as you have a generation greater than A5, all we have to parse is fours and sevens. Okay, cool, this is actually pretty simple. Um, like sevens are commands and fours are right registers. Uh, yeah, so we just need to look up what these commands are and my guess is it actually is in that, um, that file. Okay, what is this, XML? XML? Adreno PM4. What is PM4? These opcodes in hex? Yeah, they're in hex. Well, don't do that. Where my window go? Closed. I press something and my window goes away. Mm, it's not what I want. How do I make it say OX?
Come on, someone here has to know that. Oh, in case dollar sign is specified. What? Where do I put the dollar sign? I put a dollar sign there? That's cool. Base dollar sign. Love it. No, except I don't want that to be uppercase. Fine. Now it's all lowercase. That's great. Okay. What is opcode 17? Oh. It's in ib prefix end or cp thread control on this variant. That seems a lot more plausible. All right. Should we copy this PM4 and parse an XML file? Who's excited? Should we use a regex to parse it? Just kidding. Regexes suck, even with regex101.com. Regex101.com. Just make TV ads. All right. Um, let's parse that shit. Uh, have to go all these parents get rid of that that get rid of that uh, how do I parse stupid XML in Python Where did they get the name from? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Oh, that already looks brutal. I can just tell. XML sucks and everyone involved with XML sucks. Why, why do they use XML? Can I get the stolen Qualcomm version of this? It's probably way better. Same packet ID as verify the parents actually here loads. Um, so how do I uh, like get the Get root. Just convert to JSON first? Okay. Um, is there a way to do some Python? XML to dict, but this is a go install some garbage. All right, it has a lot of all right, fine, it has a lot of uh, why would you want to convert it to JSON? All right, because some guy told me to convert it to JSON. You should just listen to people. I get it. I get what you're saying.
This sucks. I'm going to parse it with a reg X. Is there multiple roots? Don't tell me there's multiple roots. That's the one I want. Yeah, now do it in C. Deal with if there's variants. All right. Um, and it probably gets all of them, whatever, man. Shit. Cool. All right. Um, great. Wait for idle, not CP context, reg bunch two. CP context reg bunch two. Return control. Reg to mem. Nop. Nop. Wait for idle. Cond indirect buffer PFE. The same, let's just do the same vowels here. That one's got a ton of crap. Event right seven fifty one. Wait for idle. CP run open CL. Right, so like, why do they have knobs with sizes? These are just stupid. Are you sure it's actually CP knob? Oh, they have docs for these things? How do I know which one associates with which one? XML stupid. Why, why do they have why do they have packets that just skip? Okay. 
not the real name, but seems to be what's used for OpenCL instead of CPDRAW index. Okay, well, that seems reasonable. How about load state six frag? Are there real? Are there like leaks of the Qualcomm GPU driver somewhere that use real names? It's really cool that AMD open sourced all this stuff. NVIDIA open sourced their stuff too. But I'm not sure NVIDIA open sourced this. I think I had to look at Novu for this. Okay. Let's also try to figure out what register this is. Here we go. It's in the A366XML. It's the HSQL control register. Thread size. I see. NVIDIA open sourced, it's not really the driver. Uh, NVIDIA open sourced the kernel stub that talks to gsp.bin, but there was a lot of good stuff in there. They basically moved the driver onto the video card itself. Or a lot of what was historically called the driver. Uh, and they put in this thing called the GSP. All right, it's pretty good. Um, so like, do I need all this crap? SP private mem hardware stack offset. Oh, I guess where's the, uh... oh, this, okay, these are, this is a pointer. That makes sense, this is a pointer too. Oh, sorry, that's a control register. But that's a pointer. Memparam private mem adder private mem size four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, this is a private mem adder, and this is the private mem size. I see. So how much of this stuff do I actually need? Similar to CP context reg, writes to a scratch memory that's read with, oh, you know what? You know what'll help? If I go in here, I'm doing profiling on this, aren't I? If I have debug equals two, I'm doing profiling. not do that. But let's instead do dev.synchronize. Um, might not even matter if I'm doing the profiling. I might need to disable it when I create the command queue. Where's that? 
Uh, here we go. Scale cube profiling enabled. Get our wrong type. Okay, find zero. Is that shorter? Don't look shorter. One twenty eight, one seventy eight. One seventy eight, oh, it's a little shorter. It's a little shorter there if I don't do the, uh, if I don't do the profile. <laughs> Okay, and then what's in the object list? What's CP thread control? What is that number? That's reasonable. CP reg to mem. Qualcomm released this real stuff somewhere. Get always on counter. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So this is. This is the always on counter. Oh, I don't know, actually, maybe not. I don't know what that is, but regardless, I'm sure this is the uh, the the profiling. Actually, we can test that by disabling the profiling. And seeing if those reg to mems go away. Okay, the reg to mems are gone. Cool. Well, I like them because I understand them. Um, yeah, okay, so basically what's happening here is this is a GPU memory address and it's saving this like built-in performance counter uh, to the GPU memory. Very cool. These are also loading things from memory. All of these 64 things are basically pointers, and we can dump them, and we can look at what the GPU memory actually has. That's GPU memory, that's GPU memory. This is loading something from GPU memory. What is this register? Nobody knows. They don't have the OpenCL stuff very well reversed, it seems. But either way, they put a two there. Do they always put a two there? Oh, look, see, these reg to mems are different. They always put a two there. What's this register? Doesn't know. This register? Oh, I'm not looking in the right driver. Do you know what this driver is? This register? Oh, you do now. Wait, you're telling me it was here? Oh, interesting. Look, they do have some debug registers here. They do have some info. They don't like tell you much, but it's something. So this is the this is the Qualcomm driver that's in the Linux kernel. Crash dump. You know, you could tell me what all the registers are. Oh, here are some registers. Any good ones? Probably not. They probably only give you bad registers. Like a TP register. Why do I care about TP? I don't.
But this thing has, oh, Instralen. Wait, what? The Instralen's only two? This whole thing's only two Instras? That is Instralen of zero, if you believe that. Mesa Shader Compute. Launch grid. Out packet seven, out ring. What's out ring? Oh, it's just like raw data. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's like one, and then they put the data. Okay, that makes sense. We have some helper here. What chip is, but oh, global offset is these zeros. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is global size X, global offset. Oh, that's cool that you can offset it. See, there's another thing that's in the, uh, that's in the, yeah, okay. Right, so they do have a lot of this compute stuff worked out. ASN1, like the, uh, the parser. Do they call CP run open CL? This does here, but only on that. Interesting. Where was I looking? I mean, it's interesting, Mesa is actually much more grand in scope than what I want to do. I just want to build the simplest drivers that can dispatch compute kernels. I don't care about graphics. Graphics is where GPUs become really complicated. But if you're just using them as computers, it's pretty simple actually. Okay, so that does CP run OpenCL. That makes a lot of sense. What if I go back to this one where I'm just copying in some data? That's not OpenCL. It's still OpenCL. What data is it using, I wonder? That also calls run OpenCL. Even though those are just copies. Very interesting.
So it's doing that. So how is it mapping that to the GPU? See what I'm saying? So this is this is just doing a copy out, right? I'm, I'm not doing any um this is just copy out. If you if you want to read the code for copy out, it's it's just CLNQ read buffer. Uh This synchronize actually does nothing. And you see that it just prints hello down here, even though I put in nopo. Um, but it's interesting that that's actually calling OpenCL with a program that's being uploaded early on. So we probably shouldn't actually be doing any copying in, copying out. We should just share the memory. Like there's nothing special about the memory, I don't think. Well, no, I mean, I guess actually what's interesting that is how is... How is it being pinned? That might involve looking at the object. So I just allocated some memory here in Python. I mean, another thing that's really cool that we can take advantage of with these GPU drivers is like, th there's only one piece of memory on this thing. There, it's a unified memory space between the CPU and the GPU. I don't really know how that like works. I, I know when I allocate memory on the GPU, it gives me GPU memory. But yet somehow it looks like it's using a single OpenCL kernel to do that copy. I mean, I'd be curious to see what the code is for the shader, but what I'm more curious about is how is it mapping it? What's <laughs> ASN1? It's a binary serialization format. Yeah, you're right. All right, should we parse the object struct? I think we understand the command buffer. I think we just have to understand the object struct. Like whenever someone wants to actually do this, I think that's all the stuff you pretty much need. All right, what are in objects? Let's find out. They do not have the same format. Very much not so. List of KGSL command objects. Okay, so we have, I mean, there's still KGSL command objects. It's the same thing. But unless that's a packet type six, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know what a packet type six is. Or wait, what else could that be if it's not six? Let's look at the other packet types. So we know about packet fours. What's a packet two? Could it be a packet two? Six is, yeah, it could be a packet two. What are packet twos? Because we, we know it's not a uh, packet zero or three. Maybe it's a packet two. Doesn't look like it. It's not a packet four. That would have to be a four for it to be a four. 
Another pack of two. What is this object? stream what's the object stream list of kgsl command objects for tracking What are these? Those don't look like full-fledged pointers. I don't think I looked into this at all in, uh, in Thneed. I can check. Sometime there are KGSL GPU sync things that are used. That doesn't look like it's happening. No, it's just a GPU command. We have num commands and num objects here. Uh, capture it in a cached command, capture the objects here as black boxes. Definitely not. Okay, it's not those types of packets. There's gotta be something else. these flags oh here okay there's a command list IB I see so that just means there's a command list IB and this is a obj list mem obj so this is here being submitted with whatever B O I V A is Allocate them, I don't know. Sub alloc, no. Size, okay. Command batch profiling buffer. What? No, it can't be this. This isn't some. It's time. Why else would it increment like that and that one would be kind of random?
This stupid shit is time. Yeah, what else increments like this? Okay, that's great. My only problem is how come this one only has, this has seven shits and this only has Oh, so this might even like be in here. Wall clock. Okay, GPU ticks at ring buffer submission. I would say that it's stale data, but why, why is that one there? What, what is that? Oh, that's an ioctal. That sneaks its way in there. Because that one's actually already submitted. Multi-threaded garbage. Oh. No threats. Okay, so it's a clock. Actually, is it this clock? Take that, add hex 28 to it, and that is that up there. There we go. And I bet two of them are going to go away if we comment out the profiling thing. In fact, it went away altogether. Okay. All right, let's parse that with that stupid struct. And then the rest of it is, uh, is level, is whatever. Uh, key, GSL, command badge, blah, 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 blah. Never at the top, it just feels so unreachable. Segmentation fault. Oh, because it's the GPU adder. <sighs> Size doesn't even match. Don't tell me if the count be converted to pointer. Oh, oh. What? Not what that does. C types cast. You can't just cast it from a void P. We only do some garbage. Uh, I do this in tiny drag. Like a from MV function. Called from MV. C types address of two type dot from buffer. 
Okay, fine. I think I can do this. Wait, two type. If I do this dot from buffer, get mem. Buffer is not writable. From buffer copy. Great. Great, we got stupid time. So we're gonna have a bite of pokey. I'll be right back. Those are just being written by the kernel, I'm sure. Oh, like what are those flags again? We can know they're like there. Command batch mem list, obs list, memory obs, obs list profile. Okay, probably only works with profile, but whatever. Okay, so this still doesn't answer any of my deeper questions, which is how does it get from the thing to the thing? Alec, we get a GPU address here. That is great and wonderful. Now, where does that reappear? Nowhere. What's A? Can I do format struct on that? I don't think I can. I think it's like an opaque struct. Oh, contents maybe? I don't know, I still don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, struct seal mem object has no fields. Okay, fine. Um That's what I thought was the program. That's a GPU at, oh, that's a big number. It's kind of annoying that these things aren't in hex. Should we print them in hex? Yeah, we can print them in hex.
Well, that's where all the FCs are. We found them. Um, that's not our GPU address. None of these are GPU addresses. I got 496 confused with... That doesn't, like, match that. That's 40. Well, those are 40, I say. I don't know. Let's go, like, if it's greater than 31, we'll print it in X. So these are GPU addresses. What's the address of my memory view? Can I get the address of a memory view? I can get the address of a byte array, I think. dot address of um, c c types dot c char p c types dot pointer so I said c char what I'll just copy this exactly This is my buffer. I pass it there. Why? Where is it? No, but seriously, where is it, man? How does it know? Yo. It's making another copy. It has to be. It's making a copy. Stupid user space is making a copy. It has to, because it has to make a copy to pin to GPU memory. And then to add insult to injury, it makes a second copy in OpenCL. Unless this isn't making a copy at all and it's actually just flushing the cache. This doesn't look like driver development. What do you think driver development looks like? It has to be making another copy. Yeah, there's no way for it to get that object to a, uh... wow. It's actually probably pretty common. Think about it, like, I have some user space pointer. The user space pointer is not in pinned memory. Uh, I don't think the kernel can promise that that, that won't page out. Maybe I can unprotect it? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's asterisk.
Maybe that's Malik the Biterers? No, that's just a GPU Alec. Uh, yeah, that's the GPU Alec. We do copy in. We do a bunch of dumb futexes. And then we do the uh, GPU command octal. All right. Um, wow. So, like, let me explain. Well, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, we don't know what's actually that stupid. It could just be making one copy. It's possible the CPU is making the copy. Um, we can know this by making it really big, actually. If we cared. I don't really care that much. Um, so it's probably, I don't know what it's running. Well, the program is probably here. We can dump it and I have a disassembler for this. So, question, how much of this crap do I actually have to do? We allocate all these things. Does it matter? Um, all right, let's go back. This example is kind of boring. Let's go back to the tiny grad example. But let's try something. What happens if I add B to A? What changes? It's the same. That's different, but that just might always be different. That MAM address changes, but only because that MAM address changes. Um, I don't actually need to synchronize, it's being called anyway. Uh, well, actually, let me remove that and then get rid of the debug and see what happens. So that won't sync the GPU. Okay, we're doing two now. You see how this command contains two run open CLs? So one of these is adding A to B and one of them is adding B to A. What's the difference and how do I know? Maybe it's these load state frags. Well, no, okay. There's three inputs to the kernel, A, B, and C. So I would expect to see three things. Is it the same? I mean, it's probably there. So we can learn about that guy. Oh, is this the shader? Why are there two shaders?
shared constants. Blah 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 blah. Separate, not the full C outlet. It would make too much sense if, uh, there was one for each thing. Two in there. Or two, that's just gonna end up in the, in the, in the program. That's what they should do. Oh, I see the knob surfer, some parser thing. I just want to get it. Oh, I went back to the five equals two. That's why I didn't put two shaders in the. I mean, it's got to be those load frags, right? There's nothing else changes. It has to be whatever's at this pointer. That's just a GPU memory address. Or maybe like that's the buffers and that's the shaders. I don't know how long something is. But all right, we can try a type seven. Um, if ops of ops code. Shift shift like thirty two four vowels one get men. I don't know, let's get ten and dump it. That's identical for both of them, and that looks like nothing. Okay, I mean, they're in the same thing, so it has to be something that differs between the two runs. There's just not that much that differs. That's the same. Actually, it can't be longer than 40 because that's 40. And that doesn't differ, it's just a different. Okay. You understand what I'm looking for, right? Like in this one, I do A plus B, and in this one, I do. B plus A, they have to be different. Or some pointer has to be different. Do you guys see a difference? It's like some like, where's Waldo shit? That's the same address. Those have different addresses, but they're not different. OK. 
Can't be the reg to mem stuff. Wait, dry it all, indirect buffer PFE. Set up the sizes and stuff. Yeah, what? Did you show all opcodes line 101? What's line 101? This is in the same command buffer. So there's no time for the uh, user space to change anything. This looks more like just sizes again. Line 101. No, that's not enough code. Read that code more carefully. That's an ioctal. It can't be a different ioctal. Again, this is the whole this is the whole queue. One of these should be called with BA and one of them should be called with AB. They should have actual different pointers. But yet the only thing that's different is this load frag. And I don't think, okay, wait. There's a chance I messed that up because it's too weird that that seems to be the only thing that's different. That sure seems to match what I thought there. I mean, that kind of has to be the address too. This, this has to be something else. Are you talking about this? Okay, these are all the ioctals that interfere with the GPU, right? If I had that one, it complains about some garbage, right? Okay, the only thing I can think, actually, did the top one get longer? I don't really understand what this top one is. Well, I doubt it. You know, what if I comment out add BA? Uh, the top one is 178 long. Now I put it back, and the top one is 178 long. Okay, it's not that. Um, it's not the right amount. It's not the knobs. That's 0 and 260. That's in both. Same knob, same weight for idle. Same one there. Indirect buffer PFE. Same. That line is the same as that line. That line is the same as that line. Driver development and AI is definitely in Python, of course. Um, there are these two loader state frags, but they're identical. Confirm that. This one is different from this one. Oh, oh, the length could totally be more than 40 because that's an A and that's a nine. Oh, okay. It's probably that, yeah. 
Okay, I, it's it's here. I'm just not dumping enough. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So misleading. It's actually hex one thousand forty. Looks like it becomes all zeros after one the one eighty. There's that pointer and there's that pointer. I mean, now there's enough stuff that anything could be. This just looks really complex now. Okay, here it is. This is, here's the three pointers at one at hex 140. So you can see here, it's this, 00E0E4, 00 00E4, 00 00 00 E4, and then when I switch around A and B, it's the first one's the same, but it's this and that, and the output's the same, because it's the same JIT object. Cool. Okay, we found it. Now, you see how misleading that was? I thought that these things were only hex 40 apart, but this number changed to two. So they're actually a huge distance apart. Uh, I don't really know how big the object is, but we probably want to look into that and figure out what's in that object, because that object seems to actually describe the whole thing. Tell hex thump that something's like 140 offset, right? Expected keyword argument one. If I was in real, Ooh, restore. I didn't know about that. Wow, so the world depends on this hex dump thing, but it hasn't been updated in many years. The project link is dead.
result. So there never was a way to start the string earlier. Oh, here, adder. I was just hallucinating. There never was actually a way to do this. Damn, I hallucinate like LLMs, you know? You think you're better than an LLM, but you're not. So that has to start at the first one. Okay, there never was a way to do that. That was never a real argument. I hallucinated just like LLMs. Interesting stuff in that packet. Okay, so everything's in this CP load state six frag. So you have all this crap, which doesn't really do anything, and you don't really need any of it. And then you have CP state load state six frag. Okay, look, GPU drivers can totally be written in Python, um, and they should be. Um, there's no reason that your GPU driver needs to be fast for. Uh, Oh, XXD probably has that, I don't know. Uh, there's no reason that your GPU driver needs to be fast, right? Because your GPU driver constructs these things called command buffers. Um, what you want to have be fast, like is you construct this command buffer. This is kind of making me rethink. I don't know, maybe I don't, I don't know. No, it's, this is just like data that's passed into the GPU. You don't even have to copy this. You can probably do this all much more flexibly. Like, this is probably just something that's, I can probably figure that out by revert, by dumping the shader. Um, I should have code to dump the shader. Is this gonna work? Okay, let's start by not hooking ioctal. I have code to dump the shader, don't I? Uh, what if I do like debug equals six? I'll dump the shader? No, but it should. Did I remove that? This is tragic. I think I just removed it. Like metal still has its disassembler, but I just don't think this one does. Either way, I think I have a disassembler. have code to do this in tiny grad should bring it back um if oh because i don't have device name anymore uh from disassemblers dot adreno import disasm disasm lib you work okay uh that's probably not right 
No, see, this doesn't work for that. This only works for, uh, this doesn't work because this is the fancy new GPU. But I bet if we looked, we just see that like those are just raw pointers being put there. Why did this ASM break? Oh, let's look at this ASM. Shader, come here, shader, 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 here, shader, shader, shader. Okay, so that's the end. So what's the beginning? Disassembles is nothing. What if I do like six thirty? There's a lot more stuff, which is strange. Well, you know what? this from here now I have a I have everything I have a whole sniffer let's turn my sniffer back on <laughs> Joe Biden <laughs> um, all right so we never really figured out where the pointer was it's probably in there Look at this. Uh, yeah, it looks like a shader. Adreno. Mm. You wanted a colon. Oh, I need a colon. But I won't donate a kidney. Why would anyone do that? Found a shader. Shader. Okay, so that's the dump shader. Now, here's the ad. Here's the load global from R0X. Yeah, but okay, so this looks enough like the previous assembly. And there's, that's the ad there. Then we do a bunch of knobs, then we store it. Where does that come from? C20.
So these are probably adding the, like this is because it's a globals and locals and some shit there. Where does the actual address come from? I don't know why it's trying to load a float there. I think like 51 is magic or something. Sad, sad SR32, sad. Uh, okay, so by the way, if you guys want to see the OpenCL program, you can. This is the OpenCL program. It's right there. Uh, so it does a whole bunch of math to get. So that's where all that math is. So all that is. These C's must be the globals and locals. that to make simpler uh, this is not the simplest shader I can imagine but yeah we, we already had all this in uh, in tiny guy which is pretty nice Maybe there's some docs on this. This is all the crap that makes GPUs so complicated. The Squee firmware. Oh, we can disassemble the Squee firmware with a fuck disassemb. Wait, what? No way, this is gonna work. I don't have root. Replaying command stream? Some NVIDIA crap. Okay, but that's cool. That's a shader. That very much looks like a shader. I'm very happy with that shader. Uh, is it B6 long? I don't actually know. That is... But okay, it's not clear exactly how those things. Okay. Comes from C21. So maybe that, maybe those are just the initial values of registers. Uh, C22. Maybe it's just like C20's register. What is C? Oh, that's like constants. Constants. I've met her, she's very nice.
So those are just all the constants. That would kind of make sense, right? Because these are the uh, like the global sizes and stuff. I don't know if they're used. Let's get rid of no locals. Should use them. Okay, it's a much longer program without no locals. Uh, yeah, I don't like C7X is used. So maybe those are just constants. They can be anything. You found something. Free Drino devices. Mm, no, I don't know what you want from this. I do appreciate that you generally pay attention though. I don't know how this is going to help. This mouse sometimes like buffers up scrolls. That's kind of annoying. Okay. Um, they should pretty much give us enough to write a uh, to write a driver. All right, we're not missing any pieces. We know where those things come in. Uh, we know how they end up in here. Let's actually check something quickly. What is? Oh, my guess would be. Yeah, okay, so that's C20. So each one of those is, oh yeah, hex 14, that's 20. Oh, okay. So 140 is because it's at C20. So this is literally just the constants. I don't know how many of them there are, but yeah. So when it loads, when it loads C20.Z, it's loading this guy. When it loads C21.X, it's loading this guy. And C20.X is this guy, and you can see that there. Perfect, and it's very painfully doing 64-bit math right there. Um, to load it into, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm like sad. Your GPU is wasting a lot of time uh, doing this 64-bit math when it kind of doesn't have to. It's like it's not like this number's not close, right? And we could compute that beforehand outside to make sure that just 32-bit math would be okay. But instead, we have HR here, and we have SAD. Yo, pretty cool, right? All right. Great. The two load state six frags, one of them was the constants, and the other one was the shader. I bet you that's going to turn out to be a length. Seems plausible. Does it seem plausible that that one is B6? Times that? Not really. I don't know. 
Uh, we'll have to figure out what that what that initial. There's got to be some pox on this. Not in there. Close that here. Okay. Here we go. Load state six state six mask. There we go. What is that defined? Well, it's got to be defined somewhere. Let's put some macro. Macros. All right. Where is this defined? Where's this defined? It's got to be defined somewhere. D6 const.h maybe? Where's this stuff defined? IR3 const? Maybe it's struct somewhere. Search for this probably. Okay, this SS6 bind list has to be defined somewhere. Oh, in here. Oh, okay. All right. So this is this is it here. I is thirteen. So that's dest off equals that state type. Low is 14, and that's got to be C000. Not actually, we can just do this and then shift shift 14. State source. Uh, the same thing for that. State block. One, two, three, four is actually. Wait, it's got to be that. State four is that block and then num unit bro we got the unit remember the unit it was the dumbest Jersey Shore character well situations friend the unit no 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 but then there was Dina I mean, Dina was alright but like Imagine Snooky really did leave the first day though, that would have been a tragedy. Okay. Uh that's a lot of units. 256 units. This only has two units. All right, what is state type? That seems to be the only interesting one. Oh, here, there's shader. ST6 shader equals zero, ST6 constants equals one, okay. Um, Mm, 
If it's a shader, we disassemble it. If it's constants, we dump it. Uh, cool. State source is two, which is indirect. Is it always indirect? Uh, that makes sense, actually. Wow, wow. Vulcan blob with tessellation contents. Um, okay, num unit, 256, that's a lot of units. What's state block? It's always 13. Get to find somewhere. It's not 13. That's a CS shade, I don't know. That's cool. That's cool, man. Type is zero. Dest off is zero. No unit is two. Is there another unit? Who's this other unit? Like I totally get how the num unit of that is 256, which is really how much we have to be dumping. Alright, that's probably actually. Well, it's only hex 400. That's not that crazy. Um, we'll do here, we'll do num unit times four. It's kind of crazy. Oh, but that's why there's a limit on the number of buffers. That's interesting. So how many constants does it have? It must have 64 constants. Does it? I don't know. Adreno registers. No, useless. So like what I want to do eventually is I want to replace not just, uh, I want to replace the shader compilers. I, I want to get TinyGrad to the point that it's generating the actual code for the shaders. Again, this stuff is child's play compared to making chips. If you can't write a universal driver and shader compiler, right? Like I kind of want to be the Mesa, but not for graphics. I want to be like the Mesa for compute. Um, and then like, if you're doing compute, it's, it's restrictive also on what compute you can do, right? My, my shaders are not turn complete shaders. My shaders are limited in that they can only support tiny grad operations. But what you're trying to make is you're, you're trying to define a computer, right? We, we need new computers to run these new kinds of, uh, of things. Uh, oh, there's an IR. Interesting. IR3. The compiler is responsible. The hardware is not trying to hide the shaders. Subsequent must have three intervening knobs. Weak. I feel like I read this before. Uh, where does it list all the registers here? Const. Um, which, how many consts are there? God, they don't want to tell me how many registers there are. I have to know this. Here, I can just look. Okay. I mean, 
This supports a const and there's 10 bits. Oh, wow, that's a lot of consts. Maybe 12 bits of consts. Four nine six consts. It's a crazy amount of consts. The consts, consts are constant for every run of the shader. So it's not that many actually. So in reality, what we probably do here is we say that a lot of this stuff's a crazy pipe dream and we just do the parts that are needed for Thneed. Uh, which are just replaying the command buffers. Which is most of what you need actually uh, for all these sort of things. You wanna get it before it frees too. Like you can never, once you hand things over to Thneed, you can never use the driver again. Because there's no way to resync the timestamps as far as I know. Scheduling and stuff. Oh, this is all going to be fun. I think we can fit it all in 5,000 lines. Or like we get to write like a like a scheduling engine. Like the, the reason these knobs are here is because the ALU has just has a pipeline, and like this is used. Actually, no, this is pipeline. That should they shouldn't be there. Those knobs are stupid. Those knobs are really stupid. Whatever. I'm not the compiler. Um, yeah. GPU drivers, shader compilers, to the metal. Oh. Uh, also, you really don't know ever how far you are away from the metal. Right? I have no idea. Are these things actually, what are they parsed by? This could totally be transpiled into some GPU microcode somewhere. Right? You have no idea. Um, but we will finally know. So to come back to, fit, to ask your question, we're, we're nearing the end of the stream. Uh, I want to go listen to copyrighted music. Um, we had a nice serious stream tonight. We did work. Uh, before I took a bath and I meditated while I was off stream. And then I came back and I was calm. I was not calm this morning, but now I'm calm. Do we have viewers? Is anyone even watching? 527. 
so we'll know that we're at the metal once we tape out our own chip. But until we've eaten up every single layer, to come back to that question from before, we're not ready to tape out a chip. Uh, Tiny Grad's going to, once Tiny Grad can run with truly no dependencies, right? We still have dependencies right now. Um, we have a dependency on the user space of the GPU. We have a dependency on the shader compiler of the GPU. But we'll get to the point where Tiny Grad doesn't depend on those things anymore. We're going to remove NumPy too. It's going to be completely pure Python, assembling shaders and driving GPUs. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I don't think we're really going to move out of America. Uh, I was, I was angry about that. We might, we might seriously do pop-ups. Uh, we might do pop-ups. I think that people who work at Tiny Court might like that too. It is more of a mobile, uh, company than comma, but you know, the thing about remote is you have many people who the first question they ask is, can this job be remote? And if that's your first question, you're not a good fit. Um, and the reason you're not a good fit is because it shows that what you prioritize in life isn't your job. If you end up working remotely sometimes, this is all fine. But if your highest priority isn't the success of Tiny Corp, then you shouldn't work at Tiny Corp, right? Um, so yeah, that's... The bigger problem that I have with actual remote is those people. That's what upsets me about it. Um, people who are better about it can talk about it in a pretty intelligent way. And the, I think the intelligent take on remote is that the there is something missing. I do think it's a technical problem. Um, and I think it can be fixed and it can be fixed with tooling and infrastructure. But, you know, companies should focus on, on what they're good at. Um, removing NumPy is actually not a hard PR at all. TinyGrad barely relies on NumPy. Uh, we have like one last piece of abstraction that still uses it. It doesn't even do anything. Like we, we can totally, <laughs> literally the only thing NumPy is really doing for TinyGrad is parsing, if you create a tensor from an array, that array is being converted into bytes by NumPy. Um, it's it's 10 lines of Python to fix this. Uh, then there's a few other places where we just happen to use NumPy for legacy reasons, but TinyGrad can be completely decoupled from NumPy. Um, TQDM is, of course, TQDM is a meme dependency. Um, it doesn't actually rely on TQDM. We do use it to make a few progress bars, but because TQDM, TQDM is, TQDM meets the bar for TinyGrad quality code, uh, we're happy to include it. Um, yeah, our trip next spring, I don't know, Dubai, Singapore, Estonia, somewhere nice. I don't know, I'll talk with uh, the rest of the company and then we'll see what we want to do. Um, but, you know, I, I want to look, if you're interested in this stuff, we're hiring people kind of across the entire stack for Tiny Corp. Uh, if you like this low level stuff, um, if you like this low level stuff, work on the low level stuff. If you wanna work on the hardware side of things, uh, we're building the tiny box, right? Like the hardware side. Hardware also comes with a certain amount of like DevOps and testing. Um, you need, we need to do test plans for the tiny boxes, you know, make sure they're all really good. We have to literally deal with the logistics of shipping a 90 pound box out to people. Um, you know, this is a lot of stuff that I'm doing. Uh, a few people at Kama are advisors to Tiny Corp, um, you know, who've been helping out. Uh, so yeah, no, it's you know, this Kama is contracted to do the Tiny Box. We're we're, we're splitting the profits basically, at least for Tiny Box V1. Uh, I don't want to set up another hardware build chain. Um, uh, when you say any positions for new grads, right? Again, have you read our stuff? Like, have you read what's on Twitter? And have you read what's about like the bounties and stuff, right? Have you done anything to contribute to the project? 
Now, if you haven't done anything to contribute to the project, there's two potential things, right? There, there's either, you just haven't, right? Like you're capable, but you haven't, right? There's some amount of people like that. Um, but then there's people who are not capable, right? So are you one or two? Right? There's people who are capable who haven't uh, for various reasons. Or yeah, are you not capable, right? And then, I mean, y oh, you're a different person. But the person who said any positions for new grads, like, okay, well then why haven't you contributed, right? Like, this is a job that you want to do full time, right? You want to come join this company. Uh, you know, again, the salaries are not high. The equity is high. Um, you know, you're joining a startup, right? You're joining a startup because you take risk. Uh, if you actually look at the best way, this may have changed, but this at least was true 10 years ago. The best way to maximize your true total comp as a new grad is to jump around from startup to startup and spend two years at each one, right? You do that, you spend, you, you work at 10 startups spending two years at each one and uh, early stage startups, early stage startups where you can get, um, you know, half a percent, a percent of equity. Uh, this turns out to, you're being your own VC basically. This this turns out to maximize, uh, maximize total comp. Um, so if you're one, if you're capable of contributing but you haven't, ask yourself, and look, four years is a long time, but you know, really, if you come work at a company, you should work there for two years. Uh, if you want to come work at Tiny Corp for two years, put in a weekend and contribute to the project, right? Not just for the project's sake, right? You know, you can contribute. You can, if you're like, I don't want to contribute to the pro. I mean, I ask why you wouldn't want to contribute to the project, but like, I, I genuinely don't know if, people like this are trolling me or not, right? Um, well, but, okay, I mean, so you, you don't have time, but you want a full-time job? Yeah, like, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, I was, I was, I was angry before. I'm trying to be less angry about this stuff. Um, like, I feel like I've actually thought this through. I, I get angry, I guess, when I see a lot of the people trolling on Twitter, like, you know, you don't want to pay American developer salaries. No American developer wants to work for a company that won't be remote. Like, if that's true, that's just so sad. Um, no bounties are gonna pay in equity. Uh, even interns don't get equity. Well, you say remote is nice, but why? Right? And maybe I haven't thought this through. Um, how's Kama doing? Quite well, actually. Uh, we were profitable this year. Probably. We'll have to net it out exactly. The bank account went down a little, but our assets increased. Um, you know, last year we were not very profitable, but this year we were profitable, so it's good year for Kama. Um, I mean, you know, we pay well enough to live near the office. No, we're not in San Francisco. We're in San Diego, though it's not that much cheaper, but it's not, it's not like that expensive. Like if you're if you're one person, you easily get paid enough to live here. Uh, 
Um, no, but like, you know, I, something that's kind of sad about the internet in general is it's opened the floodgates to, and maybe I'm like, maybe I'm going about this wrong, right? But I, I don't like to be the type of person who uses like a private network and connections. Like this is against the dream of the internet for me. Um, when they, when the, uh, the government guy from Dubai like publicly replied to me on Twitter, that, that's the world I want to live in. I want to live in a world where we have true transparency and openness from, uh, you know, like people who run shit. This is this is something else that Elon does incredibly well. Um, he really is very accessible. Like, and as far as I can tell, you know, again, I, you know, a little more than you, but not that much. But as far as I can tell, that's all real. That's not an act. And I think a lot of people get this. Th there is no there is no team of people putting on Elon Musk, right? Versus you can go to Sundar Pichai's Twitter and. You know, there's a team of people. And, like, everybody knows that. And, like, what the hell is that? Yeah, remote is nice. It's more of a mindset when work is just work. If that's how you feel, if work is not basically your top priority in life, like, you shouldn't work at... You know, it's not to say that you can do nothing else with your life. Um, I don't think that's even particularly good. But if work isn't a major source of value in your life, yeah, like, you definitely shouldn't work at any of my companies, uh, either of my companies. Like, and also, like, like, what are you kind of doing, you know? Um... So very good dev works on their own stuff. And I, I certainly get the appeal of that. Um, I, I'm hoping that I can create something that, like, it's very easy for me to get money. Um, and we can build sustainable businesses versus where a lot of independent developers, like you're not really gonna be able to build it's hard to build a sustainable business yourself off of open source. Um, so that's a benefit. The other benefit is like, I hope, and maybe this is my fault, but I hope you see the vision in the project. Um, I put the first blog post up about it the one about the AMD GPUs, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up. This goes there, this goes there, this goes there. Uh, here. Uh, I put this blog post up and Multiple people reached out and said, this is one of the clearest things they've read about the, about the AI space. Like, I really don't put a lot of time into trying to be understood. Did I manage to capture enough mindshare at AMD? No, I told that guy, you know, I don't talk to that guy anymore. I, I got decent people at AMD. Um, I have people now who I can email an issue to and they will quickly reproduce it themselves, right? How they choose to triage the issue, now we're at least in a point, right? Like, I also feel that the issues that I've reported to them, the HIP compiler is 5x slower than the OpenCL compiler. I have a way that I can use multiple threads and reliably crash the microengine scheduler. Those are the two bugs I reported to them. I mean... Neither of those bugs are completely, are, 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 they're annoying for me, but they're not breaking my workflow. So I'm not going to put massive amounts of pressure on them, right? We haven't had a chance yet where I've been able to put massive amounts of pressure on them. But I can, I have a pipeline, I have people I can email at AMD, be like, hey, I found this bug, uh, you know, 
please just reproduce it, right? And add it to your list. And as long as you do that, um, you know, triage is on you for the most part. I'm not gonna scream because it's not, unlike that first bug, which was legitimately breaking my workflow, these are much more minor, so. Um, what would happen if the commute included at work increases it to more than 50% of your free time? Why do you live so far away from work, right? There's so much, you know, if, if, if you, like, the longest commute anyone at Kama has is 20 minutes, right? And even that's kind of long, right? There's some cheap places to live five minutes from the office, like a five-minute drive. Well, it doesn't cost 80% of your income. I know how much you're getting paid, and I know how much the rent costs, right? Like, there's, there's plenty of places you can rent around here for, like, $2,000 a month. I saw, I saw a great one. There's a great one, like, up the hill. I mean, it's a small place, but if you're one person, like, it's two grand a month, right? Uh, Tiny Corp full-time salaries are 80 to 120, right? So it's, it's going to be, like, one-third of your salary. Um, and then, you know, if, if you want to live... If you, well, that, that's to have your own place, too. If you live with a roommate, you can do it even cheaper. Or a bunch of roommates. Um... Full-time salaries are that. I mean, intern salaries are pretty much the same. Uh, interns get paid between fourteen hundred and two grand a week, uh, depending on experience. So you can yeah, you can easily afford to live here. It's not. But no, I mean, I I do hope that most people also like think a little bit longer term, right? For what ends up happening. Like, I don't know, you know, uh, Connor Leahy told me this. He's like, George, you know, I, I don't meet many people who think like on 30 year time scales. And it was just strange to me. It was strange to me for two reasons. First, I never thought of myself as someone who thinks on 30 year time scales. And I never thought that the way I thought was like different. But it seems to be, and it's, it's. Um, can you go on a rant? You're, you're now banned, Buzzkill Bill, congratulations. You know, this is the only way to deal with, you're a lobbyist, right? And you're only gonna ban lobbyists. Do I see AI taking all or most of the jobs in programming? Um, it's not even like a, I think that You aren't gonna move to coding. Um, you know, again, these are these are like harsh truths. So you wanna move to coding, what do you do right now? But you're looking to switch to coding. What do you do right now? What sort of science? So, I mean, yeah, bio can span a whole spectrum of different things. Um, bioinformatics is a lot of sort of coding. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what it is for bio. Do they have bio on there? One twenty one. Um, I 
like you, you know this is this is one of the saddest one of the saddest facts that seems to be true about humanity is that like it doesn't change this stuff doesn't change if you're if you're 30 your life is really whatever it is i hope everyone kind of knows that no one talks about it and you'll, you'll hear about the the counterexample case right and i apply this to myself all the time right like kind of what my limitations are are limitations that are going to be probably stuck with me forever you know you figure that out and No, it's it's not like my neuroplasticity isn't what it once was. I'm not sure that's even correct. I'm not sure you ever got a choice. Um my friend has a saying, you don't change, you just change the perception of yourself. Trauma can have instantaneous change for the bad. There definitely is instantaneous. God. What are your thoughts on CyberSec as a thing for people to go to school to study versus typical coding or comp engineering? Okay, hang on. I'm really, look, I'm in, I'm in a good mood tonight. Um, And I'll take your question as genuine. Like, okay, try to communicate. I, I, I don't even like know where to start. I, I don't even, No, I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm really like trying. And again, like I, I do think a lot of this stuff that I see out there is genuine. No, but wait, what's the, like the saying, like, like, uh, you know, you should be yourself or what's the, what's the, like, like you should follow your passion. But what if your passion is stupid? I don't understand what level the question is asked at. I think I don't. Like, <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you like the don't be a new brand. I think we've been talking about this a lot on this stream. If there's anything that can like, okay. The singularity is, is coming, right? Let's start there. Let, let, me, let me explain to you how I sort of came to where I am. Okay, when I was, when I was 14, I, I read Elias Yudkowsky's EACC stuff. And it, it gives you a way of looking at the world and looking what 
hum looking at what humans are. I, I remember once a, a conversation at, at Burning Man about what is the like goal function or loss function of humanity because there is one. And like stop thinking about it from the perspective of yourself. Oh, it was a good it was a good conversation, right? And the, these are the kind of things that they're not conversations that I would have now. But they're interesting conversations to have 10 years ago. And if you haven't had these sort of conversations, you should, right? Particularly if you're, if you're that sort of age. And, you know, it's, it's confusing to me how everybody seems to function in the world with no underlying understanding of what things are. Um, to not understand how electricity works, to not understand how, how math works, how computers work, to not understand how the world works, to not understand how, like, to be able to separate your feelings from reality, to be able to separate yourself from the world. Um, education, okay, so, uh, education doesn't do what you think it does. Um, Read this book. Uh, Kaplan argues that the primary function of education is not to enhance students' skills, but to certify their intelligence, conscientiousness, and conformity, attributes that are valued by employers. Yeah. Uh, I liked this book. Another book to read. Um, actually, I, I would read this one first. This one's even better. Uh, if, if there's one thing that you're going to go do tonight is read this book. Um, the main thesis of this book is that we are very often not aware of our real reasons for most of our behaviors. Our behaviors are optimized for living in a social group and very often from the point of view of natural selection, it is useful if we are not consciously aware of our real motivations. Um, yeah, it, it is questionable if education sort of does anything outside of a broader cultural context. Um, education can definitely do something like, like within, within a society, culture determines so much, right? You, you, you can have two groups of people. I mean, North Korea and South Korea are the perfect like examples, right? They, 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 they culturally bifurcate, right? And if you took a whole group of North Koreans and a whole group of South Koreans and each gave them two new things, culture is pretty persistent. You know, the South Koreans would be running new Samsung in 20 years and the North Koreans would have their new Supreme lead. No, come on, that's terrible. But like, my, my, my point is there are serious differences between groups of people because of their cultures. No, I, mean, I and I wish there were more stuff actually like, I'm not sure you have no control. And, and that's the, if these streams are going to provide any actual value to you instead of entertainment, we should figure that out.
Um, I read half a scout mindset that talks about this. I think the CFAR people were, were looking into this. Um, I, I'm curious if there has been... Why do I just feel like the general discourse on all this stuff has devolved in, in the last like five years too? I don't know. I mean, maybe just COVID made me realize how stupid everyone actually was. You know, I, I still can't believe, and I don't forgive some of you, for when I was saying that cloth masks are completely ineffective at stopping respiratory diseases. Everybody knew this, right? Every single person who thought a cloth mask did anything to prevent the spread of respiratory diseases, you just wore a cross around your neck. Right? It's like you wore a cross around your neck to ward, ward off demons. It was, it was like that level of stupidity. And take, like, put, think for a minute, like, as me, and you see this, right? And, and I see a world of people putting t-shirts over their faces to supposedly prevent the spread of a virus. Like, this is tragic. And, and this stupidity was just like at, at a mass scale. I'm not arguing being against masks. I'm not talking anything about some masks may very well be effective, right? Even N95s may be effective. I think properly worn P100s are definitely effective. But cloth masks... I, I like it's hard for me to get over it, it's hard for me to get over realizing that society is just absolutely insane on a grand scale saner voices don't prevail at least not in any short it's it's just idiots leading more idiots In the early days of the pandemic, we were all scared. So masks seemed like a legit idea. What, what are you talking about? I'm not talking about, I'm not making some argument about a mask mandate versus the individual freedom to spread a disease. We haven't even gotten to that level yet. What I'm saying is that a piece of t-shirt over your face does nothing to prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. And in 2019, Every single person understood this who had ever thought about the topic at all. So, I mean, religion's an interesting one, right? I'm religious and I believe in God. I have found, and again, this is probably much more just due to, you know, my social circle and the people I interact with. I have found much more resistance to that belief than the opposite. I have found the real dogmatism to be in the atheists. To ask, how can you possibly believe in a backwards idea like God? Are you kidding me? Where did the universe come from? They don't have an answer, of course. Um, you know, they'll, they'll tell you something about, well, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, there was a big bang, uh, and what, that doesn't answer anything. And that's not the question I'm asking. That's the wrong answer. No, I do have an answer. God created the universe, right? I'm not sure. I have faith. I think it makes the most sense to me. Right? I'm not, look, I, I understand that there can be, that we don't really have evidence, and it's a hard thing to kind of get evidence about. Um, well, I'm not Jewish. I'm Christian. I'm Christian. I'll even say things like, I believe Jesus died for my sins. And I do to an extent. Um, I mean, that gets a little more, right? Like, look, I'm not going to let religion, like, if you start seeing evidence that contradicts any religious thing you might believe, 
you got to give it up, right? Like you're just wrong about that. You're wrong about that particular fact, right? Like I'm not one of those dogmatic people who thinks that everything in the Bible is true. I think the Bible is it's a human origin story. Now, do I believe in the afterlife? Well, no. 50-50. Not sure. Again, I give it a decent chance that uh, the first thing I see when I die is a game over screen. Saying God created the universe is saying you don't know, but with extra steps. I mean, that's one way to look at it, right? Um, how do we end up on religion? No, uh, I, I, everyone should read this book. A everyone should understand that, like, a lot of the things that they are, the things that they believe are very unexamined. Let's say that. Right? Like they haven't really thought through. Um, which is something I give a lot of credit to a lot of the sort of, uh, like, rationality people about. They have thought things through pretty far. And I think the forks of rationality is... Well, where does each group of people get off? Right? Where do everybody finally gets off the thinking train at some point, right? And where does each group of people get off? Um, have I read a book called The Invisible Rainbow? Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow? No. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Um, I had a date with this girl and uh, she believed this stuff. She believed this stuff about 5G. And I'm like, look, I, I, I'm telling you, like, I know what 5G is. I understand the spec for 5G, right? I, I understand, like, if somebody wants to make these sort of claims, I'm going to ask them what specifically about 5G they think the problem is, right? I'm going to ask them this. How does 5G differ from LTE, right? If they can't answer the question, how does 5D, 5G differ from LTE in a very technical way, then they should have no credibility to speak about this. 5G signals are weaker than 4G generally, yes. Uh, radio in general has been, if, if you track radio over the years, radio in general has gone from incredibly high powered spark gap transmitters down to the, you don't understand, we're below the noise floor using 10 milliwatts broadcasting 10 megabits, right? Um, no, cloth masks are completely ineffective at uh, preventing the spread of uh, respiratory diseases. And like the these studies that went and came out were so... I'll look at this one. Yeah. What did they do? Uh... A threshold-based dose curved response statistical power analysis? The fuck? Dude, here's the study you do. You get 10,000 people. You assign them to two groups, the mass group and the no mass group, right? Then you look at who contracts the disease. This isn't a perfect study because it's not double blind. Obviously, the participant knows if they're wearing a mask or not. This is not science. This is like the problem is it becomes so easy to. It's so fragile. It's so fragile. I, I just don't, this upsets me. Um, right. But guys, if you just believe those two links, 5G is going to kill us. And don't worry, you can wear a surgical mask and it'll protect you. Don't worry, just, just wear a mask, man. 
I do tinfoil hats, man. Can I do book streams? I've been working really hard on Tiny Grad. There's a lot of work to do. There's so much to do. Yeah, I, I CO2. I, I don't like CO2. I have a CO2 monitor in my office. You know, I think that shit's bad for you. Um, let's start a book club. I don't know. Who the hell are you people, you know? What? Name 10 books. All right, let's name 10 books. All right, so we got, we got Catcher in the Rye, we got Slaughterhouse Five, we have War and Peace, Crime and Punishment, Lolita, uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, what else we got? What else is kind of in that classic lit genre? Oh, you can waste your time and read uh, A Tale of Two Cities or Oliver Twist. Terrible books. Um, if you want to stick with Russians, Dostoevsky also wrote Notes from the Underground. Uh, man, I wish I had more time to read. Uh, you know I love David Foster Wallace, Infinite Jest. He did eventually publish The Pale King, but it wasn't as good. It wasn't as tied together nicely. Um, you can read the Culture series, Consider Phlebas, Player of Games. And I think I have Use of Weapons over there that I gotta start reading. Um, of course, Brave New World, 1984, Animal Farm, everything you should have read in high school and actually paid attention to. Um, I never read Brother Karamazov. Accelerando. I read Accelerando. Charles Strauss. Um, Clockwork Orange. What? I'm not. This is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that they've perverted the lit canon, and you're gonna have to read Bell Hooks, a feminist screed. But like, this is absolute classic. Uh, this is Western canon, guys. Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. Like, if you haven't read read these books, you should read them all. Atlas Shrugged, Fountainhead, Anthem, you can read all the Enrans. I've never read Brother Karamazov. Can I give a list of book recommendations? Oh, Wealth of Nations. What? Is Adam Smith? Thomas Piketty? I don't know. I never read that. Uh, Death of a... Death of a Salesman was a play, bro. It's good, though. It's a good play. Uh, yeah, you can read, you can read Bronze Age Mindset, Modern Philosophy, Mike Ma published two books, uh, Harassment Architecture and Gothic Violence. Um, yeah, I don't remember Anthem. I thought Anne Rand's books continually got better. Alice Shrugged is my favorite. Um, I never read Capital. I mean, like Marx and Engels. Trial of Socrates. I might have read that in existentialism. Um, all right, you want to you want to do you want to do other topics? Good, I like this. I'm thinking about different things. I've been thinking too much about uh, about Tiny Grad. Yeah, Neuromancer, Snow Crash. Uh, you know Stevenson's books. Oh, those are the only two I read. I don't know if the other ones were any good. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, Dune. Dune was good. Um, Gravity's Rainbow. Could never read it. Uh, I read Foundation. I'm too modern. Very modernist. You know, psycho history. Like the concepts didn't didn't grab me. Um, though, actually, my favorite Asimov book, uh, Understanding Physics. That and the Feynman Lectures taught me physics. I'm not debating destiny. Destiny will beat me. This is, this is me. this is me surrendering to destiny. I'm not a good debater. He's genuinely good. Um... Raid here. How many people we got? 
41, welcome, welcome. We're just kind of shit talking. Um, I'm, I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to get the, no, 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 Destiny's a good debater. We surrender to him already. Um, I didn't read the new Musk yet. I read the old, I read Ashley Vance's Musk and I read Isaacson's Steve Jobs. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Like you can be right and lose because debate tech, you can get Somalia, man. I'm just, I learned, I learned from my two debates that I'm not very good at debating. Um, uh, surely you must be joking, Mr. Feynman. Yes. Um, you want to see the tiny keyboard? It's small. You know, we, we did all this stuff on this little phone here. And the little keyboard connects to the little phone. Oh, it makes me so happy. Thank you, South Korea. You actually gonna code on it? You can try. Uh, QED, uh, like quantum electrodynamics. I tried multiple times with that. What's behind me on the rack? And Early tiny box prototype. You guys have seen the new ones? I, po I posted the new ones on Twitter. Do I only do things I'm good at? I've been working really hard on tiny grad for the last like two months. Um, do I worry about carpal tunnel? No. Uh, all right, you guys want to come at me with you guys want to come at me with general knowledge science? Let's see how much science I know. Turing Cathedral by Dyson, the vacuum guy, or the Dyson sphere guy. I actually don't know who came up with the Dyson sphere. Is this the Dyson sphere guy? I would imagine. Why does it have bad ratings? Explain monads, it's a container for state. How do planes fly? Bernoulli's principle. Uh, no, they generate lift because the air is faster across the bottom of the wing and slower across the top. So the slower air is lower pressure, air is higher pressure here, plane goes up, that's lift, right? Um, how does CRISPR work? All right, so CRISPR is a is a system that was extracted from some bacteria that does some DNA insertion thing. And you can like, you can put like a restriction enzyme and tag a certain place and then CRISPR will insert some DNA. Um, do I accept the axiom of choice? No, because I'm a finitist. If you are a finitist and you don't believe an infinite set can actually exist, then there is no need for the axiom of choice because it is obviously true. Um, what is a covalent bond? A covalent bond, the, like the naive explanation is you have like, okay, so like two oxygens, right? So oxygen, uh, atoms want to form an octet on the outside, right? So oxygen has two in the inner ring and six on the outer ring. So it'll form a double bond uh, where they'll share two pairs of electrons. And in sharing those two pairs of electrons, they all have completed octets. Uh, that's the like high school chemistry understanding of a covalent bond. There is something called like, like, like it's called like homo theory or something. And you can, uh, it's like quantum chemistry. You can work out what like the real meaning of a covalent bond is. And it's just due to some like low energy statistical state. Um, explain the Kardashev scale. Okay, so uh, we are not even a uh, type one civilization. A type one civilization uses all the energy available on their planet. A type two civilization uses all the energy available from their star and a type three civilization uh, uses all the energy available in their galaxy. Uh, so as we use more and more energy, 
will need more energy that's available on Earth, more energy that's available from the sun, and more energy that's available from our galaxy. Um, can I prove P versus NP? No. Uh, explain a word I don't know. Explain viscosity. Uh, okay, so viscosity is due to, uh, I think it's like, at least in water, like water will form a meniscus because water molecules are polar. Uh, alcohol is like a non-polar molecule, so non-polar molecules won't... Van der Waals forces, something, something, something. Um, but I mean, viscosity is just basically because the atoms like to stick to themselves, right? It takes time for them to move. So like if you take like, like, like Millikan's oil drop experiment, right? Like oil... Is that exactly viscosity? Oil will continually spread out while like water won't due to internal bonding forces in the water. Um, explain the Pauli exclusion principle. All right, you ever been on a bus, right? And there's like two seats, right? So, so it's like that, but you don't sit next to the, uh, the other person, right? Like you take the empty seat, right? Everyone knows that until all the seats at least have one person and then you can, you can double up. Um, or that might be the Pauli exclusion principle. Or it might be the one which says basically like you can't have two electrons in the same like spin state because then they are the same electron. Uh, do I have ASD, like autism spectrum disorder? No. Um, well, the oil drop experiment was electron charge. Yes, but the, the point, the reason it was oil is because oil completely spreads out. I think that's right. Or maybe you can just get the smallest possible drop of oil and then you can measure it by how much it spreads out. Um, I think that's right. Uh, how many genders are there? I mean, gender is largely a construct. This is actually true. This isn't wokey garbage. Uh, I mean, you can look at like, there are actual sex chromosomes. Um, most people are either XX and that's female, XY is male. Um, there are like metafemales, XXX. I think Klinefelter syndrome is XXY. Uh, generally, the people who don't have XX or XY have various health issues, but some of them, I think, live totally normal lives. Um, male, female, and ladyboy. Yeah. Uh, what was before the Big Bang? Uh, so. um, explain electrons in computation. Do you want me to like, explain how semiconductors work? What is acetylcholine? Okay, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Um, I mean, neurotransmitters are just like signaling molecules. It seems like, it seems like the brain has two systems for a lot of this stuff. Like there's a there's an electrical system, which are the basic like neurons and stuff, uh, and how the neurons communicate. But then there's also you can like set these global parameters with uh with the neurotransmitters they're also used for signaling but i think at a slower speed than the electrical stuff um but yeah acetylcholine traditionally is i don't know like you just think of the word cholinergenic it's the easiest way for me to think about like what acetylcholine is is like you know vape for vape for a couple vape for a minute straight right like keep vaping right and like how you feel at the end of that like that's acetylcholine i don't know i mean I don't know. like like i'm not sure what more of a definition you want um what is junk dna it's dna that we don't know so i think only 10 percent of the dna codes for uh codes for proteins Right, so there's a strict way to like convert DNA, to convert DNA into into proteins. Um, like we have a system for that, codons, blah 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 blah. What are those things? Ribosomes or something? Um, yeah. So the other DNA that doesn't code for proteins, we know less about the purpose of it. It's we're not sure it's junk. It could be. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I think they've done like have they done knockout mice without it and they're okay. Um, explain log n. Well, it's like, you know, uh, okay. So like 
1, 10, 100, 0, 1, 2, right? Like it's like the number of zeros, right? That's what a log is. Let's just count the number of zeros, right? That's a log base 10, but you can put something in base 2, still count the number of zero, count the number, count the number of digits, basically. Log is just count the number of digits. Um, how does charge pass across gaps in the myelin sheath of neurons? Uh, I don't, so, okay, neurons, as you mature, I think that this is the difference between white matter and gray matter. I forget which one is actually myelinized, but the, uh, when you say, how does it pass through, right? Like, like you can think of a capacitor, right? You can think of charge on both sides of a capacitor. If I put charge here, right? It doesn't actually pass, like an AC signal will pass through a capacitor fine, right? If I have a high frequency signal, it'll totally just pass through a capacitor fine. I think maybe it's, does a capacitor shift the phase of a signal? I feel like it does, right? Because you're 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 like, does it does a capacitor shift the phase of a signal 180 degrees, right? Because you're like shoving electrons up here, right up to your dielectric, right? And then it's gonna repel electrons here. No, that doesn't have to shift the phase, right? It's just straight up like electrons come here and they go there. First time chat. Do you actually know this? Uh White matter is myelinated, that sounds right. How do we calculate the total computation of a human brain? Uh, so, I mean, I like the very naive one. The truth is we really don't know, but I like the very naive one of, you know, you have 100 trillion neurons running at 200 Hertz. So that gives you 20 petaflops, right? That's like not real. The brain runs much more sparsely than that, but I don't know, I just like the number, right? Like it's just a unit, 20 petaflops. How did they measure the horse, right? Like. Like, like, what about Joe's horse? His horse is a lot stronger. His horse is at least three horsepower. Like, you know. Um, will we ever use more percent of our brain? I think you don't understand what you're talking about. Um, how do you create a wormhole? Like, is there, is this, do you want to like, you want a Star Trek answer? Well, you have to obviously use the deflector and emit a polaron burst, right? But you, you have to make sure that you have tachyons from the time ship in the 29th century. Uh, I like this. I'm thinking about different things. Are people liking science? Is it practically possible to create one? Yeah, just, just invert the deflector polarity to emit tachyons, you're good. Actually, there's a definition of what tachyons are, it's kind of cool. Um, if you take particles, right, like, like, like if you take the, um, uh, what's the equation? It's like, well, E equals MC squared, but that's not exactly true because particles have momentum. So I think you divide by the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. You could imagine a particle with uh, imaginary mass Right, you can imagine if, if V was higher than C, you'd get a square root of a negative number, which would give you an I in the denominator. So you need, you need an I in the, uh, in the numerator. But you could imagine how that particle would behave and actually it would, take, it would be going infinitely fast and it would take more and more energy to bring it closer to the speed of light from the other side. Um, does Chernikov radiation prove the existence of tachyon? I don't think so. I think Chernikov radiation is the one where it's when you have particles that are moving faster than the local speed of light uh, in whatever like like fluid you're in or whatever, right? Like so, the speed of light in air is less than the speed of light in vacuum. Uh, the speed of light in water is even lower. That's why you get refraction. Uh, you know, you, you can work this out. Um, like this is why water refracts light uh, due to the change in speed of light. Uh, so Chernikov radiation, I think, is like it's it's just when you have particles going faster than the medium speed of light. Explain time dilation near a massive object. I don't know, man. Just like it's the, the watch Interstellar. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, okay. So uh, time dilation occurs. There's a reason for this. I actually don't know. I'd have to think about it more. So you're definitely going to get time dilation as you go closer to the speed of light, right? And you can see why this is because you could imagine like a 
two mirrors and a ping pong ball going back and forth. But as you approach the speed of light, time like stretches out. Um, I have to think about like how this affects the observer and stuff. It has been a long time since I've thought about that. So, I mean, it might just be like that same effect. It's like one of your mirrors is grabbing, I don't know. Um, oh, explain the difference between an RS flip-flop and a JK flip-flop. All right, let's go. So an RS flip-flop, the RS, SR stands for reset and set. Um, I believe a JK flip-flop is just like a latch. Wow, I haven't thought about that in a long time. RSs have reset and sets. I used to try to build flip-flops out of transistors and stuff. That one is the first one I'm gonna look up because I'm pretty sure a JK flip-flop is just like a latch. Um, yeah, with the addition of a... Oh, okay, so it's the same thing, but they added a, so you still need a, uh, you still need a separate J and K line. Oh, I thought it was more like just like a latch and you're just like, like when the thing triggers, you, you, you let it in. Maybe that's how these things are usually used. Um... Cool. Explain the tension mechanism in transformers. Um, oh, this is, I mean, not, come on, that's like real. That's like real. I, I like the flip-flop one. I haven't thought about that one in 20 years. You know, that's the joke. Like, if you asked 13-year-old me, he would have had the perfect answer. Um... So when I said Facebook was the good guys, no, come on, science. We done with science. Why don't we know the truth value of S and R are both one? Stop breaking my flip flop, bro. Stop breaking my flip flop. Um, I don't talk about neural networks. Ugh. Ugh. Great filter. That's the one where it's like aliens blow themselves up like we will or something. What's the relative minor of the key of C? Uh, so you're talking about A minor, right? So if you're playing like a C chord, you're, you're playing C, E, and G, and then you can go down to like A minor and that's in there. But E minor is also in the C uh, major scale. But I would say it's A minor, but I would also accept E minor, maybe. Um, explain the difference between type one and type two supernova. I, I don't know this. Uh, well, all right, all right. Let's, let's try to think this through. What is a supernova? Uh, stars sometimes go supernova. They release an immense amount of energy. I think a supernova happens. Okay, so like you have a star in its final like state, sometime it becomes so massive that it becomes a black hole, but sometimes it doesn't, right? And then like all the fusion happens at once and that's how you get a supernova. I think that's right. Um, the dark forest hypothesis, I, I tried to read three body problem, but couldn't see through the Chinese propaganda. Um, I tried to read Raw Quantum. I tried to read this book, but I couldn't see through the rationalist propaganda. Um, where is it? I have three body problem. What do I have three body problem? Uh, so I do know something about, I, there was a blog post about like the Ethereum Dark Forest. Um, that it was kind of cool. Oppenheimer was too long. It was an hour too long. It was a good movie though. By what mechanism does a Geiger counter function? I think it's, um, but they have like, like photo multiplier tubes. I think it's the same sort of trick. I think that like you have something that's like in a somewhat unstable state and when a radioactive particle hits it, it hits two, it hits four, it hits 
eight, and that's why you hear the click. I think it's like a radioactive form of a photomultiplier tube. Um, have I read David Deutsch? No, I haven't, but this book's on my bookshelf. So I was like, oh, I haven't read it. Um, gravity effects propagated the speed of light? I think so. Um, what would be the relative size of the Milky Way galaxy if the sun were the size of a red blood cell? Oh, God. Okay. Um, so red blood cells are visible under light microscopes, I think. So right, let's put them at let's put them at one micrometer. I don't really know. Um, okay, now what's the diameter of the sun? Right? Uh, okay, so one micrometer. So that's going to be micro is ten one e minus six. Right. Um, so if the I really don't know how big the sun is. Uh, the Earth is maybe order of magnitude 10,000 kilometers in diameter. The Sun is maybe, I don't know, I'm just kind of going off of like crude solar system models. I have no idea if they're accurate. But the Sun is maybe something like 100x bigger. So let's say a million, right? So let's say that's, that's, 10 to the 12 difference. Uh, so the Milky Way galaxy is 70,000 light years across. Thank you, Star Trek Voyager. Um, so 70,000 is something like 10 to the 5. So we have 10e minus 7 light years. Um, okay, let's knock the years off of that. Uh, 525,600 minutes. So that's like... We're talking something like, like a light second. So the Milky Way galaxy would be about the distance from like the moon's two seconds. I think it would be like here to the moon. Order of magnitude 10,000, I told you. That's, come on, that's really good. Uh, is that right? Like that sounds about right, right? It's like, it's like the Milky Way would be like this distance from the Earth to the Moon if, if, if the Sun were a red blood cell. Probably not off too many orders of magnitude. Explain quantum mechanics. You can just say explain quantum mechanics. What do you want to know? Why do power companies transmit power at extremely high voltages? Because the size of the wire you need depends on the current, right? Um, the... The losses depend on the uh, on the current, right? Uh, so yeah, yeah, if you if you want a wire to carry more current, you need a bigger wire. Um, think about it. My naive thing that I like to think about is like like a river, right? And the current is if you take a cross section of a river, right? The current is the uh, the size of that cross section, right? And the voltage is the speed of the water, right? So if you want to get more water through the river, well, you can do one of two things: you can either make the river bigger, or you can uh, make the water go faster. Uh, the faster you can make the water go, the smaller river you need, and we get to save money on buying copper. Um, the Milky Way galaxy would be the size of the continental U.S. Eh, not too far off. If that's even true. Is it possible to create a black hole that has the density of Earth's atmosphere? I feel like this is one of them stupid trick questions where like, well, yes, if, if blah, 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 blah. Um, but, but actually, no, I'm going to just say no. But it is possible to create a black hole that has the same weight as the sun. It just has to be a lot smaller. All right. What scientist wrote a book about the impossibility? You can waste your time reading Emperor's New Mind, Roger Penrose, if you want. Um, do I think there are three timelines coexisting? Explain polarization. Okay, so in the 1950s, um, most Congress people 
used to cross over the aisle. But as time's gone on, the two Congress people have become more and more uh, on the extremes to the point that you have very few people who will vote either way, and that's polarization. Um, wait, it'll be 3x the Earth to the moon distance? Yo, if that's true, I just did the sickest Fermi calculation. If that's actually true, dude, I crushed it. 3x off? And I used Star Trek Voyager to the, for the size of the galaxy? Come on. Your physics textbook taught you wrong then. What's polarization in, in, uh, in electromechanics? Um, I mean, I guess, so like, you can certainly have atoms that have a charge, right? So atoms usually have the same number of uh, protons and electrons but you can rip electrons off and create ions. Uh, I think it might be possible to shove more electrons on. I'm not sure you can do that, actually. I'm not sure that works. Um, well, it must, though, because sometimes things can have a positive charge, right? Sometimes things have a negative charge. No, that's not usually true. Ions have a positive charge. I'm trying to think, like, are there things with a negative... I mean, I can definitely make ions by ripping electrons off. Um, how good am I in physics? Again, you got to just give me questions, right? Uh, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for special relativity or general relativity or, you know, just, just a paper about improving the efficiency of the patent office. Um... Cations have a positive charge. Oh yeah, this sounds right. No, no. Oh, cations, cathode. Ugh. All do, do. Are there ions with a negative charge? No, I think ion means positively charged. Oh, with a net electrical charge. No, I guess it can be either. Oh, okay, cations and anions. Okay, no, no, no. It can be both. Um, wow, I didn't know you could do that. H minus, you can shove two electrons on one? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've always seen, I've definitely seen that notation before. I mean, I guess, how do I make anion? Yeah, I guess that's just kind of stupid to think that they don't exist. Hydrogen anion. Okay, well, hydrogen anion is just like a proton. Wait. Oh, I guess. No, wait a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, because you have like a salt, right? And a salt is going to want to like, I have a chlorine, right? And a chlorine is going to want that extra electron. So that actually becomes an anion, right? Because that's Cl minus and Na plus, right? It's Na plus if it gives it up because, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm wow. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you have an ionic bond. An ionic bond isn't exactly really a bond, uh, but you will like, like the sodium... Uh, which is over here uh, on the periodic table. Sodium is a, uh, shit, there's uh, this and then earth, alkali. It's an alkali. It's, it's here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so sodium basically will give up an electron, become positively charged to chlorine, which then becomes negatively charged, completing the octets. Physics is an MRI use. It's like some trick where if you expose hydrogen to a high magnetic field, 
you can like measure the concentration of hydrogens when they decay, spin something. Um, Uh, imagine a rod made of steel, which is three light years long, free in space. What will happen to the other side of the rod if you pull from one side? Uh, I mean, the constant velocity. Uh, so it's going to stretch, right? I mean, again, like steel is not even like, like I've heard this look like a like a perfectly uniform rod, but steel is gonna have some amount of elasticity to it. Obviously, that nothing can propagate faster than the speed of light. Um, but once you get it up, once everything's accelerated to that velocity, it'll go back to its length. If it's accelerating, it'll always be slightly uh, dilated. But I guess, where does the force come from? Oh, I guess you're pulling, okay, you're pulling on one side, so you're applying the force at the end, right? The truth is, your rod will definitely break pretty much no matter how thick it is, I think, because there's no way that like the force like builds up. I, I don't know. But if it's stretching, what is that force coming from? Well, it's like inertia. Like it's gonna, you gotta get it's inertia, right? Everything's got inertia, even in space. Uh, what does it mean for the universe to be non-locally real? Um, I think that this isn't true in most interpretations of quantum mechanics, but I think the idea basically says that like, no, it, it, there's, there's a whole bunch of theorems about this that go into like, um, Non-locality doesn't imply faster than light information transformation. Uh, piezo electricity, you stretch metal, you get electricity from that. I think that's right. I think it's like, I don't know. I always think of the piezo transducer, you know? Um, oh, I saw a Nobel Prize of the photoelectric effect. I actually did know that. I did know that. Um, the Coriolis effect? That's why water spins backwards in Australia or something. I saw that on Bill Nye. Crystals, man. Who is the winner of Jersey Shore? You can't win Jersey Shore. You can only go to jail for tax evasion. All right. On that note, thank you, everybody. Uh, I don't think I'm going to stream tomorrow. You got two streams today. We wrote some part of a GPU driver. I talk to you more about the difficulties of, of, of hiring and just what, I don't know. It's just like, it's like bleak. A lot of this AI stuff's just so bleak. It's gonna, it's gonna really draw, it's gonna really draw out the absolute truth of human nature. And I don't think we are ready to hear it. Um, I don't think that, yeah. We're, we're, we're about to summon untold power and it's gonna reveal the truth about our nature. I don't know, man. But then again, like, people used to like live in hot and die in wars. So I don't know, maybe our struggle is not that bad. All right, good night, everybody.